and I'm going back to uni in like two weeks. I'm going to have to get a cut for freshers anyway, so. It's all over the place, mate. Yeah. You got any tips? I think he's all right for uni. Yeah. But for the press conference and stuff like that, I, I'm going to bring in a new uh, policy mm. for hair, mm. and, and that wouldn't pass. So let's work on that for the next one. Well, how, how about my dress sense? What's that like? Well, it's kind of it's kind of media, mm. you know. I mean, it's all over the place, mm. but it's ma it's kind of matching. Mm. I mean, you know, I don't think that's too bad. It's more the hair. More the hair. Yeah. Okay. So. That's right. What, what I'll do is I'll when I go back to uni, I'll take I'll do a little haircut for freshers. Got a lot of hair. Yeah. I mean, I'm losing a bit, and if I had your barnet, I could really do something special with that. Mm. So I think you could really, you know, a little bit shorter at the sides, a bit more, bit more product on top. Mm. I think you could look look the part, Pav. It could do indeed. Could do indeed, Ed. What I'll do is I'll, I'll definitely take that on board. Thanks, mate. I appreciate it. At the next barbers, and then we'll go from there. Do you want me to ch shall I crack on with some yeah, with some questions? Talk some boxing, shall I talk some boxing? Right, no, no, no problems then. No problems. Right. So anyway, obviously, um, a very very small event on Saturday night. Yeah, tiny. tiny um, just just looking at, just looking at that, it, it just makes you wanna. A bit nervous. Look, even looking at the poster. To be honest with you, yeah. Getting a bit excited, that, um, you know, uh, uh, towards towards the end of the press conference, were you? I'm excited. Um, these are the kind of events you want to be involved with, and um, you know, obviously, I've been working with Kelbrook for a long time, and I know how dangerous this fight is. But at the same time, I know this is the fight and the chance that he's been waiting for to show everybody what everybody who knows Kelbrook has said for a long time, and that is that he's an outstanding fighter, and he's going to have to be to beat Gennady Golovkin. Um, in terms of the undercard, you know. Um, so many different fights that I'm excited about on the card for so many different reasons. I mean, even Martin Ward against Andy Townend for the British. You know, we've had Martin from when he turned pro. I've always thought that he's an exceptional talent. It's kind of like a career-defining fight for Martin Ward because if he can't beat Andy Townend, who is a, a good talent who can really punch, he's not going to get to the levels that we expect him to get to. So it's a really important fight for his career. Charlie Edwards changing for the world title. I'm... I'm perhaps just as nervous for that fight as I'm about Brook Golovkin because that's a, a, a fight and a step way beyond the levels that he's operated at before. So, um, you know, I believe he can beat Casemiro, but it's going to be hard work and he's, he's got to go th to places that he's never been before, um, which he's capable of doing. Haskins against Hall, I mean, you saw it. I love it. You know, I love it because it means a lot. You know, both guys desperate to win. And when you've got two guys desperate to win and there's a world title at stake and they're British, you're going to get a great fight. So I'm really excited about the night and, of course, the main event. And, um, you know, I think the biggest the biggest night probably for me yet, really, as a promoter. I know I know Froch Groves Wembley too was massive, but this feels like, you know, bigger, bigger on an international level. Do you think, do you think the Glovkin book feels bigger than the two Joshua fights this year at all? Yeah, I think internationally. I mean, look, Joshua's a huge name. I mean, he's a freak in that respect. You can't really get close. Um but in a, in a boxing sense um, and on an international credibility sense, this is the fight. And to bring it to the UK, you know, it, it's, um, yeah, it makes, makes you proud as a promoter that you can bring the number one fight here and fight fans get a chance to see it. And I know Kel Brook's a big name in the UK, but people are also very excited to see Gennady Golovkin box in the flesh. And it's quite unusual that you get a chance as a Brit to see an international pound-for-pound pound number one come here in his prime. That's the difference. We've had some great fighters in, in Britain come, but very rarely at the top of their game. I was watching, you know, on Sky on Demand, they had uh, Eddie Hearn, How to Make a Big Fight. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah that, that, that was good. But uh, I think um, number one line of that had to be when you said, uh, I went to the back of my garden underneath a tree, had the call from Kel Rook, and be like, yeah, I feel like I lost it. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> well, I couldn't believe Eubanks didn't sign. And I worked my nuts off for that fight. And yeah, yeah I got it over the line. I was really quite, you know, quite proud that Senior had sort of goaded me that I couldn't do it. And then obviously we did it. And then we were trying to make the Vargas fight and it was slow. And I just phoned up Kel Brook and I was like, it's a shame you won't fight Golovkin because there's a lot of money in this fight, you know. And um, he went, well, you know I'll fight Golovkin. Because after when Khan boxed Canelo, he went, Get me. I'll fight Golovkin, I don't yeah. care. And um, so we'd, we'd talked about it a little bit before and I just said it to him and he said, I'll fight him, I don't care. And I went, well, if you're serious, we can make this fight. He went, I'm serious. I phoned up Tom Loeffler and 24 hours, it was all signed. So it's crazy how it's worked out. And, and ev as every day draws closer, 
I've more and more believed that Kelbrook can do it. And um, you know, like I say, we're not idiots. We know how tough the fight is. But uh, this is, if you're going to be a great, this is the kind of fight you've got to win. A, lot, a lot's been made about Kelbrook obviously moving up from 147 to 160, so on and so forth. Um, when I asked Dominic Ingle the last press conference, he said that if you, if you look at both of them head to head, very similar size. Kelbrook came in at 176 at the check weight. So, I mean, it's fair to say one thing's for sure weight and you know the size isn't going to be a problem because Kel even said yesterday at the open workout, I'm feeling strong, I'm feeling energized. I've never felt, um, usually I'm depleted, I'm trying to get rid of all my energy. I struggle to making 147. Um, I always feel that there should be a little bit of a struggle making weight, mm. and there will be to make middleweight it's not like he ain't gonna wake up on friday and be 160 pounds yeah. so he's gonna have to get down to 160 um but this fight he's definitely the smaller man um not not by a significant amount but i keep saying don't worry about the weight in this fight just worry about the skill and the power because that's what it's going to come down to and um if kel doesn't win it's not because he's not he wasn't big enough it's just because he wasn't good enough um but he's really, really good. But so is Golovkin. Yeah, yeah. So it's just two elite fighters, undefeated fighters, 35, 36 and 0, meeting. And it's great for boxing. Eddie, in general, I even remember uh, uh, Kelbrook versus Lumbo and Du uh, all, all those years ago. Was, was that at Sheffield Leisure Centre, was it? Yeah. Leisure Centre, right. And um, obviously you brought, you brought him on then. I mean... Like, I don't don't mean to blow too much smoke off your ass, but I mean, yeah, yeah. But I mean, basically, obviously, you took him then at the Motor Point Arena, C Carson Jones, uh, Hector Saldivia, then then fought uh, Robles, beat Porter. You know, do you feel like you've had to? It's been a bit of an uphill struggle trying to, you know, get get Brooke onto that world, you know, big stage, and for the British fans to fall, you know, fall in love with him like they have with Joshua and Froch. Yeah, when when we signed him, um, he hadn't boxed in Sheffield since since he was eighteen. And I said, look, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to box in Sheffield. And we sold out the Hillsborough Leisure Centre, which at the time was a great achievement. Uh, there was only 1,400 seats in there. But at the time, it felt mega. And I remember taking photos of the queue of people waiting to get in before the doors opened. I was that proud. But I've got to say, that was one of the best atmospheres I've ever experienced because the place was packed to the rafters. And Kel sort of walks out as if to say, whoa, it's just for me. And, you know, it was a good performance. Beat Love on doing points. But everything's been stop-start, you know, um, and that's partly down to his discipline, mm -hmm. partly down to some terribly bad luck. Yeah. Um, but it feels like now that he's matured, you know, he's he's a crazy guy. Mm -hmm. um, and that gives me even more hope mm -hmm. because if you're really good, if you're a bit of a freak genius, yeah. you have a personality or a character flaw. And... Um, I think he does. You know, he, he's he been ill-disciplined. He's been unlucky. But one thing he's always done is come back. And he's always, you know... I mean, when he got stabbed and I went to the hospital, and I looked at his leg and the doctor pulled me to one side and went, no, he won't be able to train properly again. Not not at the levels, you know. He trains harder than he's ever trained. I mean, he's a, he's a remarkable healer. He's a very strong individual physically. And I think, you know, I, I keep saying to him in this fight, you have to prepare yourself to go to places that you probably don't even know exist. Yeah. And he said, I've been there already. You know, I nearly died. Yeah, exactly. So I guess this is a bit of a stroll in the park for him. Um, but, you know, fighting Golovkin is, is... But there must be so many people that have been beaten before the bells rung against yeah. Golovkin. Because by the time you get in the ring, all you've heard about is how this geezer is a beast. You know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. any normal human being would even subconsciously get in a ring fearing the power. But Kel's not a normal human being. He's excited to get punched by Gennady Golovkin. Not often, hopefully. But I think he wants to feel the power. You know, I mean, he's not going to be giving him free shots, but he, he wants to feel it. He wants to be in these kind of fights. And he's very, very excited. And I would say at this point, I would say Gennady Golovkin is much more nervous than Kel Brook. Not that that necessarily means anything, yeah. but I'm going to clutch at every straw I can. You know, yesterday I noticed at the open workout when he was on the pause of Dominic Ingle, it's as if he was imagining Golovkin was in front yeah, of him. I've never seen him that focused in a public workout. Yeah. But you could see in his eyes and his, his reactions and his faints and stuff like that. It was He's really focused and he's able to do that because he's not starving mm. and he's not worrying about his weight and he's not, think, he's not thinking, I'm not going to train here because I'm... 
fuck. I can't, you know. He did that, like, he was explosive in the workout session. He jumped on the rope, started going, Rah! and I was sort of half looking at him thinking, what are you doing? <laughs> but he's just excited. Um, so, yeah, I mean, he really, really believes he's going to win the fight. He really does. I think not only that, you know, you know when you've got, to, when you couldn't make the Khan fight, I think it was not, not, so, lo not so long ago, six to eight months, I remember, you know, a lot of a lot of the reasons why Mayor Khan said he was taking the fight, he, you know, people say, you know, who, Kelbrook hasn't fought the same level as Khan, so on and so forth. But then, obviously, this fight, would you see more reward than risk in the sense that if he, if he loses, obviously, you're, you guys hopefully he doesn't, you say, hold on, he's lost to Golovkin. This, this guy's one of the pound-for-pound -pound best in the world. But if he wins, you would say, this guy's just beat Golovkin, going up 13 pounds in weight. What have you guys all got to say now? He's yeah, if, if he beats Golovkin, he's the number one fighter in the world. He's yeah. biggest star in world boxing. Yeah. So that's the, the carrot that's in front of you. And when you gamble, when you roll the dice, I like to gamble for everything, not just for like a little bit, you know what I mean? <laughs> so we're, he's, we're rolling the dice here, we're gambling for the lot. Yeah. But it's not one of those sports where you say, well, if you lose, you know, you come back. It's a dangerous sport and you're fighting a dangerous man. So you don't want to lose this fight. You don't want to, certainly don't want to get knocked out. And, you know, because Amir Khan won't be the same fighter after the Canelo knockout. Um, and no fighter is after a knockout like that. So, you know, but both fighters, Brooke and Khan, have tried to be involved in big fights and tried to move up to the challenge. Amir couldn't do it. We'll see if Kel Brook can. Um, will he make 147 again? I think it's unlikely. Mm -hmm. But again, no decision still after the fight. In terms of Sky Sports box office, obviously you guys have done really well with the Joshua fights, so on and so forth, against White, Martin and Brazil. What sort of range are you expecting for this? How many buys are you hoping or expecting? I don't know. Um, I mean, Joshua captivates the casuals. You know, I kind of get the feeling that the boxing fans, the hardcore, until Josh is in a, a tougher fight, might turn around and say, I'll leave this one. Do you know what I mean? Um, you know, he's a consistent, huge pay-per-view draw. Um, this feels massive. Maybe because we're too close to boxing. I don't know. The pre-sales are showing Frotch Groves 2 numbers, which were huge. But the, the sample at the moment is small because all the buyers come on Saturday. So it's a huge day of sport. You've got Man City, Man United. You've got Celtic against Rangers, which means you've got the platform there to promote the show throughout the day yeah. to sports fans that are in their, in their living room. Um, so I think the range is 400 to 700,000 and I hope it's 700,000 because I want Kel Brook to get the biggest payday possible for, for this kind of risk fight. Was it sp sport porn you called it or boxing porn? Boxing porn. Boxing porn. Sport porn on Saturday yeah. but this is boxing porn. You know, like I said, I had a hard on up there even talking about the fights mm. but that's because I'm a boxing fan and that's because this is what I love to do and I like to put on, that, like, Edwards against Casemiro, that really ticks my boxes. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and maybe it doesn't tick it, you know, maybe to the casual fan, it's a flyweight fight. You know, two guys we haven't really heard a lot about. But I think any boxing fan will look at that fight and go, well, that's a great little fight that is. I can't wait to see what's going to happen. Because we have no clue. Charlie Edwards might get completely destroyed by Casemiro, who might just be levels and levels above. Charlie Edwards might come out and put this performance in, become world champion. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a great little story. Um, so I'm looking forward to those fights and, of course, the main event. With, with Lee Haskins, well, sorry, uh, after the head-to-head, -head, what did you say to Lee Haskins? Uh, after he, did, did you say anything to him about the little heads in bit? Or? I just said, I said it's all right. I said it's a few more pay-per-view buys. Yeah, yeah. You know, but I've, from our stable point of view, with Stuart Hall and uh, Charlie Edwards, we got a chance for to add two new world champions. Mm. Obviously, Kel's already a world champion, so I'm desperate for Hall and, and Edwards to win. Mm. And yeah, I'm buzzing for Saturday night. What's all this stuff I'm hearing about? Um, Joshua's changed city to Manchester. Uh, Battle of the Giants is, is that what you're calling it? Yeah. Another one. You just thrown another word in because it was Land of the Giants, Night of the Giants, and now Battle of the Giants. Battle. And Battle of the Giants might win. Ooh, so can I get the credit for that? Well, possibly, possibly. It all depends on what you do with your hair. All right. That's a, well, I'll tell you what, how about this? Are yeah. you coming tomorrow? Yeah. I would like to see a smart, you know, like, a new improve. Right, okay. Have you got a chance to have a haircut today? Absolutely. Okay. Right. <laughs> Get that sorted. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. The length of the interview tomorrow yeah. will be based upon the quality of the haircut. 
length of treatment will be based on the quality of the haircut. I mean, I mean, don't ask me why today. I'll probably give you like, what is it? 20 minutes have we done so far? 15 minutes. Even with that haircut. So based on a positive haircut, we could be looking at half an hour tomorrow. Ooh. Do you know what I mean? Sounds great. Ed, I want to say thank you once again for your time. Um, I've harassed you for like the past 15 minutes. Got other stuff to do. Well done. Thanks a lot, buddy. Appreciate that. Cheers, mate.